Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Engagement Designer demo series. In the last episode, we talked about input and output mapping, and how the input and output mapping can be used to change the information that comes into and out of tasks. And then we went through and ran through how exactly we can execute a workflow through the debugger. But in this example, let's create a workflow and execute that workflow as a deployed workflow through a phone call. To start, we have our start node like before, and we're gonna double click on the start node to open our properties pane. Instead of using the created event family type and version that I created in the event catalog, I'm gonna use a predefined one called call intercepted. So if I search call intercepted, I can see there's the event family called call intercepted. This is an event family that triggers based on a call coming into the Avaya Breeze cluster. This call is connected to communication manager, but without getting into too much detail, just know that the call is being triggered, or sorry, the workflow is being triggered based on somebody calling it. So the event family is call intercepted. The event type is to called party and the event version is one. So now that I've selected my event family type and version, I need to look at the output mapping. The output mapping automatically uh, mapped itself for me so I can see that it saved information such as the handle of the calling party, the handle of the called party, as well as the time of the event and the UCID, which is the unique caller ID tied to the specific phone call on communication manager. Looking here too, I see all the information from the call event was also saved to my start schema. And if you remember from the last episode, the start schema is a predefined uh, object container that will hold all that information for you so that you can use the information later. The call object here at the top was something that was predefined within this breeze cluster and can be defined within the administration console. But for right now, just know that this information is automatically mapped to save the number of who is calling, the number of the number of who they called, the time of the event, and the unique caller ID. So I can go ahead and click save, and then click on the canvas to minimize the properties pane. So for this example, I'm going to play an announcement to the person that's calling in. I'm then going to forward the call to an agent, and then I'm gonna end the workflow. So to start, to play an announcement, I have my media communications folder. So I can open that folder, and I'll see there's the play announcement task. Simply clicking and dragging in that task, I can see now it's on my canvas and I'll line it up using the red, red lines to line it up nicely to my start node. To connect it, I just simply click and drag the blue dot like before and connect it to my play announcement task. Now I need to do some input mapping of this play announcement. Some input mapping I need, I can double click to open my properties pane and it'll give me all the information that comes with this play announcement. First, I'll look at the input mapping and see that automatically the input mapping from the call object mapped the UCID for me. This is a special feature that will only happen for call events. So we can see that the UCID was automatically mapped for me so that this play announcement knows which phone call on communication manager tied to the UCID to play this announcement to. I'll go ahead and click save. And now I need to decide if I want to hard code or input map a media URI or text that would then play the voice of the announcement. I'm gonna just go ahead and hard code some text. So I'm gonna say something like, hello, thank you for calling our first workflow. That will effectively say anytime somebody calls to this workflow, it will read out from using text to speech, hello, thank you for calling our first workflow. Now we need to decide who to play that announcement to. Play Announcement 2 has this drop down here where I can then select to play it to call ID, which means it'll play to every party on the call, play it to the called party or the calling party individually. I'm gonna say just play to the calling party and that's effectively playing to the person that's calling in to this phone number and running this workflow. Everything else in here I can be have left alone blank because these are all optional fields and I know they're optional fields based on the documentation. I can find that documentation by clicking on this little question mark in the upper right hand corner. Every task will have a, some sort of documentation that allows you to see what the input mapping and output mapping of that task are meant to be. It will also give you examples using something like a use case at the bottom. 
The use case will list out something along the lines of showing what that task is meant to do and give you some ideas of how to use that task effectively. So I see here, if I specify handle, I can play a task to that or play an announcement using that handle. But in this example, I've already tied it to the calling party. So it knows based on the calling party, whose handle to play the announcement to. And I can leave all the rest of this blank. Since it's simply creating a play announcement and not creating any new information, I can look at the output mapping and see that I don't really need to save any information based on the output mapping. So I'll go ahead and click save and will give me a warning saying that I have not effectively output mapped anything. Is that okay? And I'll just say yes. To minimize the properties pane, I'll just click on the canvas and I have effectively created my first play announcement based on a call coming in through the event bus. Now I want to forward this phone call off to an agent after the first play announcement plays to the person calling in. I can forward the call going under the folder telephony communications and finding the forward call task under telephony communications. I'll simply click and drag in that task and using the red lines, line it up to my play announcement. And then just like with the start node, click and drag the blue dot from play announcement to the forward call task. I can double click on the forward call task and I'll see that I need to decide who to forward it to. I could simply input a number by ty typing in a phone number here, or I could do some mapping by cl clicking on this button and input map a phone number for this task. In this example, I'm gonna go ahead and create a property. If you remember from my videos before, you'll see that we could create properties that could be changed later down the road and not have to undeploy and redeploy a workflow. Properties are defined within this properties node here. So if I double click on it, I will see a new window opens up that allows me to add a property or add a password. If I click on add property, I can effectively create a new property that I will then add in the information. If I wanted to add information now, I could effectively hard code the information here or I could change the information later in the admin console. For the name of it, since it's a key value pair, I need to give a name to it. So I'll call it agent's phone number. And the value I'm gonna say is one, two, three, four, because I'm gonna change it later in the administration console. I can go ahead and click save. And now I'll see, based on the properties pane from the forward call, if I were to click this arrow, I now have under my properties object container, agent's phone number. So I can simply click on that and it has automatically handled the input mapping for me to say input properties agent's phone number. To check to make sure this is correct I can look at the input mapping and see from the properties container it has mapped the string agent's phone number to the string redirect number as part of this task. I can also see that it has automatically mapped the UCID for me so it knows exactly what part of the call or which call on communication manager to map and forward this phone call to. I can click save if the information is correct and to minimize the properties pane, I'll click on the canvas. Now, just to make sure that I've saved my work, I'm gonna click the drop down and click save workflow. You can also see that I have automatically turned on my autosave. So you may notice off in the lower right that my workflow saves automatically for me. Now that I have my phone call forwarded off to my agent, I'm gonna effectively end this workflow because this workflow has done all I needed it to do. So to end the workflow, I go to the events folder and I find my end, end node and clicking in and dragging in and dropping my end node, I'll line it up to my forward call here, with the red lines, find the blue dot on the forward call and map it to the end node. Now I've created and successfully developed a workflow that will play an announcement to somebody calling in and forward that call off to an agent and using the forwarded phone call number from my properties node, which we will then define later. I can go ahead and save. I first want to validate to make sure my workflow is valid. By clicking validate, I can see I have one warning. If you'll remember back to my previous episode, you can deploy with warnings, but you cannot deploy with errors. I do have one warning that's just saying that a default value has been given to use the default standard system manager for me, SMGR system manager. And that's okay. That's just saying that it's using a local value as the default value. And I don't need to define it myself because engagement designer has defined it for me. I'll minimize the errors and warnings. And then now I'll click on the deploy button. The deploy button is going to bring up a new window here 
where I can effectively give the workflow a new name if I want. I can do versioning, such as 1.0.0, to say any versioning control that I want based on my workflow versioning control schema. I can also give my workflow a description, saying something like, let's go. This is my first workflow. And now I can see that I have the opportunity to change that agent's phone number. I could change it here and expand on it and say 12345678910 as effectively adding digits to my agent's phone, phone number. And since I'm going to change it later within the administration console, I'm going to go ahead and click deploy. By clicking deploy, I can see there was a validation success in the lower right hand corner. And there was a starting deploy function that has effectively deployed my workflow to the engagement designer and deployed it within my administration console. So by going to my administration console tab and refreshing my workflows tab here, my workflows tab under the administration console, I can now see that the first created workflow is now within my deployed workflows here, version 1.0.0 and the description. Now I need to change that property that I had listed before. So to change properties, I have to have the check mark next to my workflow name here and click on attributes. I'll see that there's the attribute that I had listed earlier or that property that I listed earlier called agent's phone number and the value 12345678910. But now I want to change that to make it a different phone number. I don't want it to, you know, forward off to that number because that number probably doesn't exist. I effectively want it to forward off to my personal phone number so that I can have the phone call be forwarded to me as me being the agent. So I will be playing the customer calling in as well as the agent in this case. Click OK to save. And I can see that it successfully updated the value for this agent's phone number value object. And I can click close. So now that I've changed my property and successfully deployed my workflow, I need to do some special routing in order to let my workflow know when to run and based on what phone number to run off of. This is all done in the routing tab of the administration console. And I can see here in my routing, I have this phone number here for me. And this phone number is what I'm gonna call into as a customer in order to hear that play announcement and get my phone call forwarded off to me being the agent. So to change it, I need to have this radio selected and click edit. Clicking edit will bring up the edit routing rule window here. And I just need to change which workflow is gonna be ran. Before I was running the complex workflow, so instead, I want to change that complex workflow to first created workflow. And I want to make it first created workflow latest in order to run the latest version of my developed workflow here. I can go ahead and click save. And now that workflow is successfully routed and mapped to this phone number so that anytime this phone number is called, I'm going to hear my announcement. So as an example, I'm going to call that phone number listed off to the left here under rule name and I'm going to see if my workflow runs properly. Thank you for calling our first workflow. I can hear my play announcement play. And I can see my calls being forwarded off to my other personal phone, to which I will answer. I don't want to get any nasty feedback, so I'm going to mute, mute both of them. And that's it. My workflow was successfully ran, I heard my announcement, and my phone call was forwarded off to me being the agent. I can also see, based on the Instances tab in my administration console, the first instance of this workflow running. Here's my first created workflow, and if I click on it, I can see the exact instance of that workflow running. I called in, my announcement was played, and my phone call was forwarded off to my other phone as me being the agent, and then the workflow ended. But as you can see, the workflow ended, my phone call is still on the hook. I'm still on the phone with my agent and nothing's changed. That is because this is a workflow, not a call flow. Workflows can run independently from calls and workflows run effectively whether or not it is a phone call involved. It just so happened that in this case, we had a phone call and we manipulated and added to that phone call based on the event defined in this workflow. But even though the workflow was successfully completed, the phone call continues. It's very important to distinguish this within Avaya Breeze because Engagement Designer is developing workflows. It's no longer just call flows. So right here, we're effectively seeing a phone call being manipulated 
and then the workflow completing and the phone call still continuing. So that concludes this episode and we've effectively then created a workflow. We validated and deployed the workflow and then we saw the workflow and routed it to a specific phone number. After we tried dialing that phone number, we saw a live instance come up with that workflow. And even though that workflow was completed, the phone call continued. The next episode, we're gonna go over a little bit more complex workflow and see how we can manipulate the phone call a little bit further and even do some sort of interactions after the phone call is complete.